Uh, my first uh, line of questioning is about the Toondah Harbour proposed redevelopment by Walker Corporation. Um, now, as I'm sure the department is aware, this would be a mega residential development on the shores of a Ramsar wetland that could potentially impact 33,000 migratory shorebirds, clear critical um, habitat for, for those eastern curlews, affect koala habitat and possibly have um, a half a million cubic metres of dredging in a Ramsar site. So I uh, imagine those were some of the reasons why the department advised the previous minister to reject the proposal as clearly unacceptable. The previous minister did not do so but rather sent it through the approval pathway for assessment. Um, my first question is whether or not the department has briefed the new minister on the history of this project, particularly the political history of this project, including the $200,000 donation made to the Liberal Party by Walker Corporation shortly before the project was overruled by the former minister and found not to be clearly unacceptable, but to be appropriate for further assessment. I'll hand to Andrew. Um, thank you, Senator. Um, Andrew McNee, Branch Head, um, Queensland Assessments and Sea Dumping. Um, so, Senator, we have advised the Minister's office about the status of the current um, referral, um, and so we've been in contact with the officer about where that's at, and particularly that it was um, moving towards a, public, a, a publication um, and for public comment. Okay, but my question was whether you've given the Minister a briefing about the, the history of the proposal. Um, no, Senator. Um, Has we, the minister asked for such a briefing? No, I think the, the minister has been clear in public statements that she's expecting to receive um, the department's advice uh, once the process uh, for the, the public comment is, uh, is uh, uh, finalised. Okay, so have you provided any advice to the new minister about options to reconsider that determination of clearly unacceptable? No, Senator. Are there any? Is it possible to go back to that stage of the process now that you're further down the track? Uh, so the, the Act provides for reconsideration in particular circumstances and it, it sets out that uh, people can make an application for reconsideration based around new information um, that might relate to significant impacts, mm. um, but we currently don't have one of those in relation to Tunda Harbour. Okay. So is there any ability for the department to, or rather for the Minister, to go back to that stage of the process and now deem the project to be clearly unacceptable? Well, certainly there is a mechanism in relation to reconsideration for that to occur, but as I said, we, we don't have a proposal for that. Uh, could you speak up? We, we don't have a proposal for reconsideration. Okay, and where would that initiate from? Um, it's, it can be initiated from um, either the, the public or a, an, another party. Um, it's possible the minister could also, on the basis of new information, um, form that. I think the particular um, details of that, it might be useful to take on notice, Senator. Okay. So that could be initiated by the public. I have, in fact, written to the Minister last week asking for her to do just that. Um, has that letter been so received So I, I haven't yet? seen that, that uh, uh, letter, Senator, but um, it, it will then go into a, a process of determining whether the information that's been provided in that request um, meets the, the test that's set out in the Act in terms of is that a valid Mm. request for reconsideration. Um, if it is valid, then it would move to the reconsideration um, mm. process. Okay. Um, so my understanding is the draft EIS has just been released. What time frames are you now operating to, assuming the proposal proceeds down the current assessment pathway? Yes, Senator. So um, it, it is out for public release. The, the Act specifies a minimum Bridget, of... Speak up a bit, the, the Act Thank specifies you. a minimum of um, 20 business days. In this case, given that we've understood that there are very significant interests in the, the project, we've um, doubled that, so it's out for 40 uh, days, mm -hmm. um, and that concludes on the 6th of December. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, um, once um, the proponent has um, considered those comments, updated the EIS uh, and provided that to the department, that then uh, triggers the 40-day the our business day decision period. Mm. Okay, so that could potentially happen over the Christmas period when people are trying to have a nice holiday, maybe even in Moreton Bay itself. Potentially. Mm. All right, well, we, we will still be watching, despite it being possibly the Christmas period. Um, the uh, community organisation Redlands 2030 has been repeatedly denied access to 
the so-called development agreement which exists between the Queensland Government, the Redlands Shire Council and the proponent. Has your department been provided with a copy of that development agreement? So, uh, no, Senator, we don't have a copy of that. That's uh, an agreement between the Queensland State and the proponent. Yes, thank you. I'm aware of that. Um, have you sought to get a copy of it? Uh, no, Senator. No. And are you... Um, how do you know that it's not relevant for the EPBC assessment process if you haven't seen it? Uh, Senator, the areas that, that we have identified as, as relevant to that are those that are set out in the terms of reference for the environmental impact um, uh, statement. Mm. Um, and so that has been available on our website and sets out those matters uh, under the mm. EPBC Act uh, that are, are relevant for kind of the consideration we're looking at. Okay, well, the community group's concerned that there could well be elements of that development agreement that could potentially undermine or conflict with conditions that might be imposed federally. So I just humbly suggest that you might wish to seek a copy of that document and reassure yourself as to whether that may or may not be the case. Um, the next meeting of the parties to the Ramsar Convention is in November, I'm told. Is Australia sending a delegate to that COP? And will uh, they alert the parties uh, about the potential impacts on yes, the Moreton yes, Bay sorry. Ramsar site from this proposal? I'm so sorry, sorry I, I missed that question. Do you say, are we sending it? Uh, are you going? And will yes, you raise will, the Tunda Harbour development when you're there? Uh, Senator, we will be, we will be uh, participating in that conference. Uh, and uh, I, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think we will proactively raise uh, the Tunda Harbour uh, 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 proposal, but uh, uh, I guess it may be raised. Uh, who do you expect will raise it, if not the Australian government itself? Senator, the Tunda, Tunda proposal uh, will obviously be considered uh, in accordance with the proposal, with the, uh, the processes under the relevant uh, uh, regulatory regime. Uh, the Ramsar conference um, uh, is not a place uh, for that to be prosecuted. Well, you said you thought someone might raise it. Who do you think you asked might me, do it? You asked me if we would raise it, and I yeah, said, and I, didn't said... See, I didn't see us, us as raising it, but I guess it's possible the question could be asked yes. because there are Ramsar issues. And uh, my question was, who do you think might ask those questions then? I'm, I'm simply speculating, uh, Senator. As you know, uh, those, uh, those meetings are attended by a wide number of parties, uh, including uh, uh, representatives of uh, non-government organisations. Okay. So it's in, up to the environment groups to raise the protection of an internationally significant wetland. The Australian government won't, doesn't think it's relevant to let the committee know that there's, uh, what is it, half a million cubic metres of dredging in an internationally significant Senator, wetland? Senator, we, we, we have rigorous approval processes at the federal level. It's not rigorous, level. come on. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to get political. John Howard wrote those laws, they are terrible. I can't uh, wait have, to trash them. We have uh, rigorous approval uh, processes, but we also, uh, uh, the government is committed to uh, uh, responding to the Samuel Review, which looked at the, the relevant legislation, uh, and the government has committed to uh, a reform of our environmental regulatory regime. Uh, and so I would anticipate uh, that uh, uh, issues relating uh, to how we can better protect uh, our environment will, of course, in inform our approach to that regulatory reform effort. Um, but uh, under the current legislative regime, which applies uh, in relation to matters of national environmental significance, including Ramsar wetlands, uh, uh, those... Uh, th th those uh, uh, considerations taken very seriously, and uh, I, I believe the, the process uh, that is currently uh, underway in relation to this project, uh, it, will, uh, uh, it will be a process of high integrity. Well, I'm not sure I agree with you because the department recommended it be rejected as clearly unacceptable, and the former minister overruled you. Senator, we'll so, be, we'll, 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 <laughs> confidence we'll, in the process is a little low right now. As the, uh, as the uh, relevant department, uh, we will uh, meticulously apply the provisions of the current uh, legislative regime. Yes, but you haven't advised the new minister that potentially she could go back and reconsider whether it's clearly unacceptable. So again, I'm not overwhelmed with the uh, integrity of the process here. Can I seek an undertaking that you will, in fact, provide the new minister with a comprehensive briefing on this very important proposal? Senator, I, uh, from all my engagement with uh, the minister's office, uh, my understanding is that they have a very clear uh, understanding of the relevant legislative regime, uh, and uh, we provide a range of advice uh, to the minister uh, on a range of matters, uh, and uh, of course, uh, options available to her under the legislative regime in relation to any number of matters are, of course, touched on. Mm. 
Okay. Again, I just suggest you provide her with a briefing, particularly about the political donations history surrounding this dodgy project.